Behind me is one of the coolest consumer units I have ever seen, but I'm not in the UK. In this video, I'm gonna to reveal to you some saucy French electrics. Drop a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and let's roll the intro. So it's been a while since I've done an electrician abroad video. As you who follow the channel for a while may or may not know, I quite like traveling. And I did quite a few of these style videos around Asia when I was traveling for four months around Asia. I've done many more in the past when I've been on holiday and stuff like that. But this is a little bit different because this is actually my house. So I'm currently living in Marseille in the south of France. My life currently consists of a few weeks here, a few weeks in the UK, and I'm basically living between the two countries, starting to settle. I don't know if I'll settle or not, but you're all here for that thing. In the corner of my living room, in a very convenient place, is my consumer unit, and it's got some unusual things about it, so let me show you. Now, in the UK, there's a few things that f have always frustrated me about the location of consumer units. You can let me know in the comments before I, I say them if you're a regular viewer for the channel. They're always in a really annoying, inaccessible place like in a small cupboard under the stairs, which you know raises all sorts of potential issues with fire, etc. which is why now we have to fit metal consumer units. Or they're like in a kitchen cupboard or they're too high. And I think we've been missing a trick for a long time. Why do we not do things like the French? I'll come in a little bit closer and I'll show you a first person view. Right, so here we are. And there's a few things that are interesting here. So our main incomer is not a ridiculously ancient crusty old fuse. It's actually a proper double pole isolator with a 500 milliamp RCD function built into it. It also offers overcurrent protection. You see that? It says 45. And if you look next to it, it says IR 15 to 45 amps. What that means is that this is an adjustable fuse, essentially. I'll talk to you a bit more about that in a minute because that for me is genius. We've got double pole, one phase protected, 500 milliamp, 250 volt with a test button switch. Then here we've got a linky. What the heck is a linky, you might ask? Essentially, this is the French equivalent of the smart meters that we have in the UK. Linky is the brand and they are pretty much standard. I think actually France have been doing smart meters a lot longer than we have in the UK. Now, what's under here, I wonder? It needs a screw, so we'll take that off in a minute. This is really clever. So this is all one unit, right? So where do the cables come in the back? How does it all work? We'll carefully take the cover off and have a little look. But here is our consumer unit, right? So in here, we've got our circuits very lovingly handwritten in very neat handwriting. The electrician who did this seems like they cared. All the breakers are numbered, which is really nice. And we've got multiple RCDs. This is a type A, this is a type AC. So interesting. So tell me in the comments what that means. Why are these circuits on a type A RCD and these ones on a type AC? What would you expect the circuits on here to be doing? versus the circuits here. Now up here, we've got what looks like ADSL and then it says DTI test. So what is behind that cover? Guesses in the comments below. Let's take the cover off and we'll do neat or not neat on my French consumer unit. Now one thing to note here, I've got some crusty tools. These are the cheapest little tools <laughs> because I'm basically not really on the tools here. So I haven't bothered to bring many of my tools over from the UK. Well, I've not really brought any of my tools over from the UK, to be honest. Um, but I've got a basic hand tool kit from good old Lidl, just in case I needed to do something like this or a bit of DIY around the house. We basically got a Stanley Fat Max screwdriver set, which is actually fairly decent, to be honest, for a cheap screwdriver set. And these are McKenzie, I think, like I said, my wife picked them up from Lidl. You know, they do what's needed. So let's get the cover off and see what's inside. I'm gonna use the fattest of the Fat Max screwdrivers. Okay, so first, like, impressions. You know, this is literally, you guys, I've saved this for you, okay? I've lived here three months and I've not taken the cover off. And just to say about this, right, 
I do not own this house, this is a rental. We're just in a temporary uh, rental at the moment. So that's why I've not, you know, if I bought the house, obviously I would have taken the cover off before I bought it. So what is this? Well, in essentially, what it looks like is a multiple data center for a house. DTI test, this looks like the phone line. Uh, I, I would imagine, unless it's digital television, maybe. Let me know in the comments if you know. These are coax cables, so that looks to me like they are something to do with the TV aerial. But then you've got almost this funny little patch panel thing. It's all slightly bizarre. This patch panel here has like a lead. Yeah, it's all rather strange. I've got fibre here because the internet when we moved in was not fast enough, so I got the landlord to put fibre in. So I don't think we're actually using any of this anyway. Uh, but quite like the way that it's all in a nice compact little box. Nice and neat and easy to take off the lid. So that's the old data box at the top. But what you guys really want to see is this, right? This is the hub where all of the main electrics come out. And the question is, has it been wired up neatly or not? So, we're going to take the cover off and have a look. Hello, sir. The pallets that he's got are too heavy to put on the tail lift on the vehicle. So he wants us to handball every single thing off of it. No way. And their deco, get this, is about 400 yards away. What? But they were still late. Oh my goodness. Okay, cheers okay. for the update. Sir. Bye. All right. Right, so that was my colleague Graham on the phone. He's on site with the guys and the materials are just proving to be an absolute nightmare on this job. So delivery didn't arrive yesterday. <laughs> Today, delivery did arrive, but arrived late. Driver refused to drop the materials where we wanted them. And then on top of that, Two of the panels were broken. That's what's happening today in between me filming this video. But it's a good opportunity to talk about like systems and stuff in business because if you're an electrician or another tradesperson and something like this happens and you have no kind of paper trail or no digital trail, you know, how do you check that you ordered the right stuff? How do you check that you had actually paid for that pre 10 30 a.m. delivery? You know, all of these things, how do you check that the materials that have arrived are actually the ones that you ordered? I think there's a tipping point where you get to a certain size where you start to take this kind of stuff seriously. And for me, it was a few years ago and I started using Tradeify. And if you're looking for a way to systemize your business better and to keep track of things and to streamline things, I can highly recommend Tradeify. You can do all your quotes on there, import your materials catalogs into Tradeify so you know you're getting the exact right parts in your quotes, and then you can quickly convert it to a purchase order, send that to your wholesaler, and place the order. And you've got trackability, traceability, you can look back and see, did I order this? Yes. Why have they sent the wrong thing? Or did I pay for pre 10 30 a.m. delivery? Yes, why have they not delivered it on time? And I think as you grow a business, it's so easy to kind of lose track of things, especially if you don't have a good digital system in place. Check out Tradeify. You can get 30% off your first three months using our special code Artisan. And right now they're doing a 14 day free trial as well. No credit card details needed. So you can just go in, have a play. And if you want to learn more about it, Tradeify are amazing. They'll jump on a call with you and explain how it all works. Thanks to Tradeify. And let's get back to my amazing consumer unit. All right, so are you ready? Moment of truth, neat or not neat? You absolute beauty. <laughs> Look at that. That's got to be one of the best neat or not neats that I've done in quite a while. Apart from the artisan ones, obviously. So this is very, very interesting and not what I expected. We have some really cool products in this consumer unit. The Hager RCD, they're actually bottom fed. You've got a feed coming in the bottom. So in, in here in France, it looks like the black is the line and the blue is the neutral, right? So you've got basically, presumably from this main switch here, the feeds which are pretty solid conductors are coming in to the bottom of this main switch then they go out and then there is a double pole bus bar line and neutral which goes all the way across and the line and neutrals are both coming into the top and these are single module double pole mcbs what that means is that you've got double pole isolation if you've got any faults or any issues which is really cool and that bus bar 
looks amazing. Then it loops out of that bottom main switch, uh, main RCD into this top one. And then same again through the RCD, a uh, slightly different bus bar here. So see the blue at the back there and the brown at the front, but same idea, basically a, a double pole bus bar that's giving line and neutral to the tops of all the MCBs. And then out the bottom of the MCBs, we have line and neutral push fit connections. All of the 20s, 16s, 10s, and there's a two amp there on the end, they all have push fit connections in the bottom of the breaker, which is really, really nice. Then up here, you've got your earth bar, which again, push fit connections, which is really cool. And it looks like it's kind of a flexible, expandable system with the main earth coming in here which is screwed to the back there. So it looks like you've got some larger terminals at the back, which are actually screw in terminals. And then the front ones, the outgoing, they're all just small conductors, which are push fit terminals, which is really cool. Now, right at the bottom here, there's an LED driver as well that they've strapped in there. That is doing the LEDs that are all way all around the room. Now, another thing to note about French wiring, everything is in flexible conduit in the walls. So you can see that all of these outgoing cables are kind of bunched together and then they go into flexible conduits there, which go in the walls to the various socket outlets, etc. And then presumably the other ones for the lights go up and for the sockets upstairs, they go up in the wall and everything just runs out in flexible conduits. And then they tend to have these round boxes, like back boxes, which you just drill in with a hole cutter, slot it into the plasterboard, and then everything goes in easily and quickly like that. So pretty cool system. I mentioned to you that this is a type AC and this is a type A, right? So why is that? Well, let's try and work out what does what in here now. Electrical French language is not my biggest forte. So, circuit one, interdifférentiel. That's basically the first RCD. Plaque chauffante. So that is the heating uh, hob. Basically we've got an, like an induction hob. La vaisselle is the dishwasher. Prise is sockets, right? So uh, the, the sockets in the kitchen area. Interdifférentiel, that's the uh, other RCD. Clim, so that is uh, climatisation or air conditioning. Microondes is microwave. Prise service étage, prise service étage, prise service étage. So we've got three socket circuits for upstairs, which is amazing. Cumulus, I have no idea what that is. And contacteur cumulus. Okay, so that is this. That is feeding something. And then this is a control circuit for that contactor. But the power that goes through that contactor is from this circuit, which is called a cumulus. Oh, I know what that is. That will be the hot water uh, tank. So we have a hot water cylinder up in the bedroom. And presumably that's what that contactor is for. So I wonder if the reason for that is that it takes some kind of signal and heats up overnight on the cheap electricity, maybe, which is why it's connected to EDF, Earl Creuse, that's what it is, Pilot EDF Earl Creuse. So presumably that's like cheap electricity hours for overnight uh, usage for the hot water tank. Hey. I think I figured it out. Right, so in a minute, I'm gonna open up that secret box. But first, let me show you the hot water tank upstairs, because that's quite interesting in connection with this contactor. And we'll also talk about why that's a type AC and why that's a type A. Okay, so come with me upstairs and I will show you the hot water tank. Wow, it's quite warm in there actually. So this is the hot water tank. Let me turn the light on. Hey, there we go, I've got some light. In here, we have a flex outlet and a big, really big hot water tank. Look at the size of that bad boy. Now, it's got zero, 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 zero on the time. Not sure why that is. I have never had to do anything with this. It just works. There's always hot water. Although it looks like there's a bit of corrosion under there and a little bit there. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be like that or not. There is some kind of manifold here. Uh, to note, there is no heating here as such, or I didn't think there was. Yeah, no, those will just be the pipes for the hot water to the taps in the various bathrooms because all of our heating is done by these air conditioning units. 
which are like that. So every room we've got an air conditioning unit with a remote control air conditioning unit, basically in all the habitable rooms. So this is what will be controlled by that timer, which presumably comes on, heats the hot water overnight on the cheaper electricity. That's not bad actually, 1500 watts. So it's not that much. So what I just showed you was my guitar that never gets used, unfortunately. It was my pride and joy for a while and I'm just now too busy running a business to play my guitar, which is very sad. Anyway, let's get the cover off that and let's talk about these RCDs. So RCDs first. Why have we got type A here and a type AC? Let's go back to basics first. And a type A RCD and type AC RCD, two different things. Type AC cannot cope with any DC le leakage at all. Type A can cope with up to six milliamps of DC pulsating uh, leakage. leakage. I think that's right, but let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. So they've got a different symbol. And the idea, according to the regs, certainly in the UK anyway, is that you should only have inductive loads on a type AC RCD. Any loads that have got electronics in should be on a type A. So this one, in theory, all these circuits should be the electronic-y type circuits, which if we look at the top here and we see induction hob, I guess that's got electronics, the washing machine and dishwasher got electronics, heated towel rails, they've got electronics in, I guess, and the EDF pilot thing. So all of the socket circuits that would normally have electronics of some kind in seem to be on that type A RCD. And then on the non, on the AC RC, RCD, we've got, Mm, slightly strange. We've got the AC, we've got the microwave, we've got sockets and lights everywhere else, and the heating element for the hot water. So do you think that's right or not? Let me know in the comments below. Now, finally, I promised you I would get this open and it does just have a switch, which we can unscrew. At this point, I can hear people, oh, there we go. Okay, so I can't get the top off, but I can see some kind of big cable coming in and through. But it looks like there's a blade fuse in there. Yep, there is a blade fuse and it's a 40 amp, I think, fuse. Now there's a reason this cover is on, it's to protect you from life parts. So I'm not gonna mess around with that too much. I'll show you a picture of a blade fuse on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. Or maybe a knife, I don't know what you call it. Let me know what the correct terminology is for it. But essentially, I think what then is happening is that the main supply is coming in from the road through this fuse. So there is a fuse from the fuse, then into the RCD, from the RCD into the meter, or maybe the other way around through the meter into the RCD, from the RCD into the main board. That is my summary. So as you can see, there's some pretty cool stuff about French electrics, but I don't know enough. I need to learn more. And now that I'm living here, I feel like I've got no excuse not to dive a little bit deeper and maybe get out with some French electricians. So if you are one of our viewers who lives in France, anywhere near Marseille, and you're an electrician, or you've got a house that needs some electrical work and you want me to come and take a look, drop me an email. You'll find my email address somewhere. Um, because yeah, I'd love to hear from you or drop us a DM on social media, whatever it is, Instagram, uh, X. I love learning about how people do things differently. And this is a classic example. There are some breakers in that consumer unit that I have never seen before. Double pole, single module Hager MCBs with push fit connections and a double pole bus bar. That is super cool. Now, probably this is me being stupidly English and maybe the rest of the rest of Europe, this is very, very normal. So all of our viewers from non UK locations, let me know in the comments. Is your consumer unit like that? Is it better? Is it worse? I'd love to know all your thoughts below. And if you like this little video, then why not hit a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll see you on the next one.